Hi, Senpai Ken here from Kyokushin Karate Talker. Welcome back to our discussion about self-defense awareness. In the last couple of weeks we've talked about subjects such as situational awareness, avoidance, and this week I'd like to talk about assertiveness and vocalization. Assertiveness and vo vocalization are two, two separate topics but closely work in together. So what I mean by assertiveness is to present yourself to the world and to the public environment of a person who is not going to be messed around with. Now, I don't mean that in an aggressive way, walking down the street, big macho man, or angry look on your face. But what I mean is to have a, have a presence about yourself where when, if someone looked at you and was looking for a victim, they're gonna turn around and maybe go find someone else. Keeping in mind that the rule of, of the jungle is that the strong will attack the weak. So some examples of what I'm talking about assertiveness is for example, if you're walking down the street, you don't want to be that person that's walking down the street, hands in the pockets, head down, not really looking confident about yourself. But maybe that person who's got shoulders back, head up, and you know exactly where you're walking and you're walking to that point. Not an aggressive look on your face, but an assertive look on your face. Okay, you'll probably find if someone is looking to attack someone, they'll tur turn around and go, oop, I'm not gonna deal with that person, I'll go find someone else. Right? It could be in the office environment, just do your general assertiveness and the, uh, persona in the office, or at a party or a nightclub or wherever else, all right? So, if something was to occur and someone was harassing you, this is where you can use your voice to great effect. Uh, so if someone was to harass you, whether it be in the office, at an outing, wherever else, okay, you can use your voice. Say, hey mate, back off. Leave me alone, will you? But say it loud enough so as everyone in your environment can hear what you're saying. And the reason you do that is so as all the attention goes to that person who is harassing you. Because the last person that what person last thing that person wants is for everybody to see and hear what they're doing. So in a in an assertive way, without being angry and aggressive, you let everybody else know the situation you're in. You'll probably find that person will turn around and walk away or back off. Right? If you're out in the street, for example. And if someone was to approach you or try to harass you or attack you, okay, it's where you start to be a bit stronger. Okay? And you start to use your voice a bit more. Okay? You might change your body stance. Hey, back off, mate. And use a stronger language. If you're being attacked violently or aggressively, you might raise your voice a lot louder. Yell out, scream for help. Because the last thing that person wants is for the people to come running to find out what's going on. That, that attacker does not want to be found out. If your attacker is yelling at you saying, shut up or I'll hurt you, that's the time to yell out even more. Again, why is he telling you to shut up or I'll hurt you? It's because that attacker does not want to be found out. So... Yell out even more. And when I say yell out, I don't mean hysterically screaming, because that's a good chance you're going to make your attacker get it, get more excited, get excitable. Okay, it might be worse off, but be strong and assertive. Okay? Help! I need help! Go away! You might find your attacker will just run the other way. Now, did you notice my body language every time I spoke? Okay and demonstrated assertiveness. My hands came up. Hands in a passive, defensive mode. But this gesture also is a calming gesture and is telling your opponent or your attacker or the person harassing you to back off, go away. Okay? But what they don't realize is you've also got the perfect defense position with your hands. If an attack came with the hands, they start to throw punches, bang. You can immediately block. You can also attack with the palm heel of your hand. 
But again, that's starting to delve into the practical skills of self-defense. If you want to know more about the practical skills of self-defense, in this, come along, take up martial arts, take up karate. Okay? If you want to know more about Kyokushin Karate Toolkey, contact me on the phone number above or direct message me. So I hope you got something beneficial out of this uh, session today. So remember, situational awareness, avoidance, assertiveness, and vocalisation. My 35 years in martial arts, those four points is what's helped me to avoid trouble out in the street. I hope it helps you too. Thank you.